Welcome to this video on the basics of shotgun shooting. My name is Dan Kidder and I have been a firearms instructor for 27 years and have taught federal agencies, police departments, and regular folks how to be safe and become better shooters for nearly three decades. This video is brought to you by Sportsman's Warehouse and is only available for those who have recently purchased a firearm. You may have recently purchased your first firearm or your hundredth, but no matter your level of firearms experience, everyone can benefit from additional instruction. This video is the fourth part of a series of videos produced to help you become safer, more proficient, and more confident in using your firearm. Please make sure that you watch the first video, The Basics of Gun Safety, before proceeding with this video. A link to that video is in the description below, or you can click here. By watching this video, you affirmatively agree to assume all liability for your use of this information and agree to hold Sportsman's Warehouse and me harmless for your use or misuse of this information. The information contained in this video is for instructional purposes only and the user assumes all responsibility for how it is used. A shotgun is the most versatile of all firearms. It can deliver a payload of shot on a target at medium range and spreads out to make it easier to hit a moving target. Shotgun shells come in a wide variety of various sizes of shot and in different sizes of shells. The most common sizes of shot shells are 10 gauge, 12 gauge, 16 gauge, 20 gauge, 28 gauge, and 410 bore. Additionally, these shells come in different lengths including 2 and 3 quarter inch, 3 inch, and 3 and a half inch. Some shotguns can even fire inch and 3 quarter mini shells. Because a shotgun is capable of firing a wide range of different shot sizes, you have a multi-use gun without needing to purchase several different guns. They can be used for home defense, bird hunting, big game hunting, sporting clay competition, and varmint control. Just as there is a wide variety of different payloads and shell sizes for shotguns, there are quite a few different types of shotguns. They can be found in lever action, pump, side-by-side, over-under, single shot, and semi-automatic. They can be found in tactical styles with features like shorter barrels and pistol grips or hunting varieties with longer barrels and limited capacity. There are even general purpose shotguns that check a lot of different boxes. For this video, we'll focus on brake barrel, pumps, and semi-automatic shotguns, but the same principles will apply to all types of shotguns. Brake barrel shotguns describe guns that have one or two barrels and break open at the action for loading and unloading. They open by way of a letter that allows the action to open at the hinge. Ejectors inside the chamber remove the shells from the chamber when the action is opened. Closing the action cocks the gun or it is cocked by an external hammer. A multi-barrel brake action shotgun may have one trigger that fires a different barrel each time it is pulled or two triggers that each fire a single barrel. They may also only be a single shot shotgun that has just one barrel. Because the internals of these types of guns are so precise, they tend to be the most expensive type of shotgun. A pump shotgun works by way of moving the forend of the gun in a pumping action. Action rods on the forend slide back to the bolt to eject around, cock the gun, and load a new round from the magazine into the action. These guns have a single barrel and are able to hold multiple rounds in the magazine. Typically, pump-action shotguns have a tubular magazine underneath the barrel, but some versions use a removable box-style magazine. A semi-automatic shotgun uses the gas from the fired shot to cycle the action. The first shell is loaded by way of the bolt charging handle. When the trigger is pulled, the action will automatically move to the rear so that it can eject the fired hull, cock the gun, and then load another shell from the magazine. The gun only has to be manually cycled for the first shell. On most semi-automatics, the action will lock open when the gun fires the last shell in the magazine. A new shell can be inserted into the open action and a bolt release can be pushed to insert the round into the chamber. Additional shells can be loaded through the loading gate and into the magazine. A shotgun seems to be pretty straightforward at first glance, but there are several things going on more than most shooters may be aware exist. Not only is a shotgun very versatile because of the wide variety of ammunition it can shoot, but because of how customizable they are to fit a variety of shooters. Shotguns can be customized to adjust different ergonomic aspects of the gun, such as length of pull, drop, pitch, and cast. Length of pull is the distance from the rear of the stock to the trigger. Drop is the distance below the comb, the top of the shotgun stock, to various points on the rear of the stock. Typically drop is measured at the heel and the toe of the stock or along the top of the stock, which is called the comb. Pitch is the angle of the stock at the rear where it meets your shoulder. Cast is the direction of bend that the stock has. Cast on means that the stock slightly bends toward the shooter. Cast off means that it slightly bends away from a right-handed shooter, but would be a good option for a left-handed shooter. 
Many shotguns on the market offer shims that can be changed out to customize the length of pull, cast, and drop for different shooters. The standard shotgun consists of the barrel or barrels, the forend, the rib, the action, and the stock. The barrel in a typical shotgun is smooth without any rifling. There are special barrels available that contain rifling, but these are mainly used with slugs, which are large single shot shells that fire one projectile. Many shotgun barrels also contain threads for inserting different diameter chokes that will change how wide of a pattern the gun will shoot. A larger diameter choke will make a wider pattern, which is good for shooting at closer ranges. A narrower choke will fire a tighter pattern, which is good for shooting at longer distances. For more on chokes, see our video on choosing the proper choke by clicking here. When it comes to the diameter of the shells and the size of the shot that they contain, shotguns can be a little counterintuitive. Except for the 410 bore, which is a caliber diameter, most shot shells use a standard of measurement called gauge. Gauge measures the fraction of a one pound lead ball. With gauge measurements, the smaller the number, the larger the diameter of the bore. A 12 gauge ball would weigh one twelfth of a pound. A 16th gauge ball would weigh 1 16th of a pound, which is less than 1 12th, so a 16 gauge is smaller than a 12 gauge. Likewise, the shot held inside a shotgun shell is measured using numbers. The larger the number, the smaller the shot contained inside. So you may want to use a number 8 or 9 for shooting clays, but you would want a 4 or a 5 for shooting turkeys. There are even categories of shot. Standard lead shot ranges from number 12 to triple B, with the triple B being the larger of the shot diameters. Buckshot, made for larger game, ranges from number 4 to triple zero, which most people call ot. Triple ot buckshot is larger than number 4. It is easiest just to remember that other than the 410 bore, the larger the number, the smaller the shot, or the diameter of the barrel. In addition to different sizes of shot, there is a number of projectiles contained in the shell. The larger the shot, the fewer projectiles it can hold. While a number 12 shot may contain as many as 400 tiny balls, a triple lot shell may only hold 8 to 10 projectiles. Depending on the type of shotgun action, they will load and unload very differently. To load a break action shotgun, you move the lever that allows the action to be opened by pushing the front of the shotgun down where it will pivot on a hinge. You next insert the shells into the chamber and then close the action by lifting the front of the shotgun up until it snaps into place. This also cocks each of the actions for firing. To shoot, you simply pull the trigger. For a double barrel, either a side by side or an over under, you may only have a single trigger. This trigger will fire one barrel, and when pulled a second time, it will fire the second barrel. Different shotguns will fire differently with a pull of the single trigger. Some will fire the top barrel first and the bottom barrel on the second pull. The same thing with a side-by-side. -side. One pull will fire the left barrel, and then the second will fire the right, or vice versa. Check with your manual to see the firing order. Some have a barrel priority switch that will allow you to choose which barrel fires first. Other double barrels will have dual triggers, one just behind the other. Each trigger is connected to a single barrel. Some double barrel shotguns will have hammers that have to be manually cocked for the gun to fire. To unload a break action shotgun, you open the action and remove the unfired shells from each of the barrels. On many break actions, if you open them firmly, they will eject the shells, and if you open them gently, they will lift the shells up for easy extraction. To load a pump action shotgun, you can load a shell into the open breech and then close the action by sliding the forend forward. Additional shells can be loaded through the loading port into the magazine by pushing the shell onto the elevator and sliding it forward. If the shotgun uses a box style removable magazine, you simply insert the magazine and then cycle the pump back and forth to load around into the chamber. The action of pumping the shotgun or sliding the forend back and forth should be smooth and fluid. After firing the shot, you slide the forend back toward you, and when it stops, smoothly slide it forward again until the action locks closed. To unload a pump action, you first have to unlock the action. Your manual will tell you the location of the action release. If the shotgun is cocked, the action will not open. Firing the gun unlocks the action so that the action can cycle. To unload a cocked gun without firing it, you have to unlock the action by pressing the action release. Under the elevator is a small retainer that holds the shell in the magazine. Pressing this into the side of the receiver will allow a shell to slide out. Repeat this until the magazine is empty. Next, pump the action to remove the loaded shell from the chamber.
visually inspect both the magazine and the breech to ensure that all of the shells have been unloaded. To load a semi-automatic that has the breech open, drop a shell into the open action, press the bolt release button to load the shell from the breech into the chamber. Insert the remaining shells into the loading port and slide them forward until they lock into place inside the magazine. If the action is closed, you can insert the shells into the loading port and then cycle the action by pulling back on the charging handle and releasing it, letting it load a shell from the magazine into the chamber. To unload a semi-automatic shotgun, turn the shotgun upside down and press the shell retainer into the side of the receiver until the shell slides out of the magazine under spring tension. Repeat this for each shell in the magazine. Once all the shells in the magazine have been removed, pull back on the charging handle to remove the shell in the chamber. Make sure that it has been ejected by visually inspecting the chamber to ensure that it is unloaded. In order to be able to shoot the shotgun well, it is important to have a stable stance. Shotguns generally have more recoil than other guns. The proper sporting stance for a shotgun has the support leg planted toward the target and the dominant leg back, much like the stance used by a boxer. The body leans forward toward the target. If you lean backwards, then you will be off balance and the recoil can push you backwards. Leaning forward transfers your weight to counteract the force of the shotgun recoil. A defensive shotgun stance is a bit different. In this stance, the body is square to the target and both feet are planted side by side. The weight still leans forward. Mount describes how the shotgun is held in the position it is in when it is aimed and fired. To properly mount a shotgun, you grip it around the neck where the receiver meets the stock. Your thumb is on the top of the gun and your index finger extends to the outside of the trigger guard pointing toward the target. An important part of becoming a good shotgun shooter is learning the proper placement of your head. Your cheek should be welded to the stock of the shotgun and you aim by sighting along the top rib to the bead on the end of the barrel. Once you become familiar with proper head position, a good mount will have you bringing the gun up to your face rather than moving your head down to the gun. The gun is brought into the pocket of the shoulder. Holding your strong side elbow out and away from the body will help to exaggerate the fleshy portion of the shoulder pocket and help you get a better mount of the gun. The support hand holds the shotgun underneath the forend to control it and help support the weight. The dominant hand is pulling the shotgun tight into the shoulder. You want there to be no space between the butt of the gun and your shoulder. If there is space, then the shotgun will punch you in the shoulder and cause bruising and pain. Get the gun as tightly into the pocket as you can. At the same time that the dominant hand is pulling the gun into the shoulder, you want to use the support hand to push the shotgun away from the body. The force should be equal so that push and pull motion is created. This dynamic tension helps to minimize the amount of recoil that is shoved against the body. Since a shotgun was designed to hit a moving target, you do not aim a traditional shotgun, but instead you point it. With a rifle, the goal is to minimize movement so that you can hit a target. A shotgun utilizes movement to fire at the place where the target will be and not where it currently is. This is accomplished by swinging through the target in the direction that it is traveling and then firing the shot the moment you believe you have led the target enough to hit it when it moves into your pattern. For this reason, it is very important to pattern your load in advance so that you know how large it will be. For more on this, click here to see our video on patterning your shotgun. For a sporting shotgun, you will likely have one or two beads along the top of the shotgun. For a single bead, you look down the rib on the top of the gun with your cheek properly welded to the stock. Swing the gun to where you expect the target to move and pull the trigger. For two beads, you look down the top rib and align the front and rear beads and swing the gun and fire the same way as you would for a single bead. For a home defense shotgun, it is possible that you may have traditional iron sights, a ghost ring sight, or some type of optic like a red dot. For these types of sights, you are aiming more like a traditional rifle. The trigger pull on a shotgun should be steady and straight back. If there's any slack in the trigger, remove the slack and begin applying steady pressure on the trigger until the gun fires. Avoid slapping the trigger or jerking hard on it, but use a slow and steady pressure to let the gun fire. The moment that the shot breaks should surprise you. Just use the first part of your fingertip before the crease on the trigger. Follow through is keeping everything the same just before the shot was fired, during the shot, and immediately after. This means not adjusting your stance, your mount, or your point. 
It also means keeping the trigger pulled until you return to your target and make the decision to fire again. If you have fired all of the shots that you will fire in that string of shots, then return your finger to the outside of the trigger guard pointed straight ahead. To achieve consistency, you have to keep your head in the same position, your weight forward, and the push-pull dynamic tension consistent, and everything the way that it was at the time the shot was fired. Recoil may move the gun, but by minimizing your movement after the shot is fired, there is less movement necessary to return to your proper stance, mount, and point positions. When you first purchase your shotgun, it can be assembled for you in the store. If you take it home in its case or box, it may come in two pieces. Assembling your shotgun for the first time can be a little daunting, but once you do it, it'll be a breeze. When you unbox your break action shotgun, the forend may be attached to the barrel portion and separate from the stock and the action. A latch on the bottom of the forend is lifted up to remove it from the barrel portion. Insert the barrel portion into the action and slide the trunnion over the notch until you feel it engage. Gently close the action to ensure that everything is lined up properly. Reattach the forend, making sure that the latch engages. To assemble a pump action shotgun, remove the receiver and stock from the box as well as the barrel. Unscrew the magazine end cap and slide the magazine extension ring on the bottom of the barrel over the magazine tube. Seat the chamber end of the barrel into the action. You may need to slide the pump back to allow the barrel to seat in the action. Reattach the magazine end cap by screwing it back on. It may feel like something is catching it, but that is a detent pin that engages with teeth on the cap to keep it from unscrewing from the recoiling of the gun. A semi-automatic shotgun may come with spacers in place to prevent the action from moving and shipping. Unscrew the magazine end cap and remove any spacers in the action or on the barrel of the gun. If the gun was shipped with the forend attached to the magazine tube and receiver, slide it off the magazine tube. Slide the magazine tube extension ring on the bottom of the barrel into the forend. Slide the barrel and magazine extension ring under the barrel over the magazine tube. Pull back on the bolt to lock it open. You may need to press the magazine disconnect for the action to lock in the open position. Align any tabs on the forend with any slots on the receiver. You also need to ensure that the charging handle is inside any cutouts in the barrel extension. Once everything is aligned, close the action and replace the magazine end cap. Cleaning a shotgun is fairly straightforward. First, ensure that the shotgun is unloaded before commencing any cleaning. Disassemble the shotgun according to your manual. Disassembly will be the reverse of assembly. You will need to purchase a cleaning kit that is specific for a shotgun. It will contain a long, thick rod, bronze or nylon brushes, a wool mop, bore cleaner solvent, oil, and patches. You can watch our videos on choosing a gun cleaning kit by clicking here. Apply solvent to all metal surfaces. Be careful not to let it get on your wood. Let it sit for a bit, then run the bronze brush back and forth down the barrel or barrels. Wipe it clean with patches on a patch jag. Then apply oil to your wool mop and run that down the barrel, followed by a clean dry patch to thinly spread the oil. For a break action, wipe down all the metal surfaces with a patch dipped in solvent. Wipe it down with a clean dry patch. Apply a little bit of oil to a clean patch and wipe down all of the metal surfaces with oil and then wipe off any excess with a dry rag so there is a very thin protective coating. The one thing that will be different for a break action shotgun than for other types of shotguns is the application of a thin coat of gun grease on the sides of the barrel and the trunnions and under the extractors. This will help ensure that the extractors and the break open action work properly. Lastly, wipe down all the wood with some walnut oil, boiled linseed oil, or furniture polish and wipe it dry. For a pump action and semi-automatic, clean the inside of the bore the same way as for a brake action. Then remove the bolt and give it a good wipe down with a patch dipped in solvent and let it sit for a bit. Use a toothbrush or a gun cleaning brush and work the solvent into the crevices. Wipe it all down with a clean dry patch to remove the dirt, fouling, and gunk. Run a thin coat of gun oil on all of the metal surfaces and wipe most of the oil off with a dry rag or patch. Reassemble your gun according to your manual. If your shotgun has chokes, remove them with your choke wrench by unscrewing them from the barrel. Use your brush with some solvent to work into the threads in the barrel and on the choke tube. Wipe them clean, then apply a thin coating of gun grease into the threads and replace them back into the barrel. Always perform a function check any time that you assemble your shotgun.
Keeping the gun unloaded and pointed in a safe direction, work the action several times and then pull the trigger to ensure that everything was reassembled properly. Do this a few times to check the proper function of all of the controls and the action of the gun. A pump action shotgun requires very little in the way of maintenance. Some basic cleaning and lubrication and it will serve you for years. Semi-automatics require the occasional deep cleaning, which requires taking apart the gas system. It is best to take it to a gunsmith for this type of deep cleaning. Brake action shotguns require regular service to keep the action working and tight. I suggest a very thorough service every thousand rounds or so to keep the fine mechanical clockwork inside the action performing at its peak. There are a few accessories that will help you get the most from your shotgun. Wearing a tweed jacket seems to be the fashion for hardcore shotgun shooters, especially on the other side of the pond. But in the States, most shotgun shooters prefer a vest specific to their shotgun sport. Upland hunters like a vest with a built-in shoulder pad to reduce the impact of recoil and with a large pocket to put their prey. These usually also have large side pockets to accommodate extra shells. Sporting clay shooters like a similar vest, but without the game pocket. You can get these vented with mesh for warmer days or insulated for cooler weather. While a universal gun cleaning kit will get the job done on a shotgun, purchasing a kit designed specifically for shotguns will give you the proper jags and brushes that you need. They also include a much fatter and longer cleaning rod. The patches that come with these kits are also larger to fit the larger bore of a shotgun. Since part of mounting a shotgun is proper cheek weld, large external earmuffs can interfere with a good mount. Having some sort of internal hearing protection that sits inside of the ear can improve your shotgun shooting. These can be passive or electronic. Watch our video on selecting hearing protection by clicking here for more on this subject. Not only do many shotguns come with a variety of chokes, but there are extended chokes that you can purchase specific for your needs. There are specialty turkey hunting, duck hunting, upland bird hunting, and self-defense chokes. Not only do you need to know what purpose the choke will serve, but you need to know the special thread pattern that your gun has so that you purchase chokes that will fit it. There are quite a few different sizes of chokes, such as Benelli Cryo, Benelli Beretta Mobile, Browning and Vector Plus, Remington, Winchester, and many more. Watch our video on choosing the right choke referenced earlier in this video for more on choke selection. Many shotguns today come drilled and tapped for the mounting of optics. These optics can be magnified for large game hunting or home defense. They also make a variety of non-magnified red dot optics that are great for more precision shooting. Many companies make upgraded sights that let you replace your standard aiming bead with a ghost ring. Just as a shotgun is adjustable for drop, length of pull, pitch, and cast, there are many sighting options that will let you customize your shotgun to make it even more uniquely yours. Because a shotgun is so versatile, you can easily swap out the barrel for a different purpose. Using the same receiver with a different barrel can let you get multiple guns out of one. You can use the same receiver and stock with a long barrel for duck hunting, a medium rifled barrel for deer, and a shorter, larger bore barrel for home defense for much less than buying a different gun for each purpose. One area that shotguns lack is that they tend to have a small ammunition capacity. For hunting, you usually are limited in how many rounds the gun can hold. Most tubular style magazine shotguns come with a plug to fill up the extra space in the magazine so that no more than three shells can be loaded. Side saddles can hold shells on the side of your gun for quick and easy access for reloading. But sometimes you just want more ammo in the gun and an extended screw-on magazine tube can increase your capacity in the gun. Shotguns are extremely versatile, very simple to use, and provide everyone in the family a gun they can use for a wide variety of sports and for home defense. They can be customized to fit every member of the family and made uniquely yours. They give you the ability to shoot moving targets or provide pinpoint accuracy with the use of slugs. Of all of the guns that I own, I really enjoy shooting my shotguns and I think that you will too. Check out local shotgun sports organizations or clubs like 4-H for opportunities to learn more about shotgun shooting and experience the fun of shotgun sports. Thank you for watching this video on the basics of shotgun shooting. Please check out our other videos on gun safety, basics of semi-automatic pistol, basics of revolver, and the basics of rifles. We will have links in the description below. Shoot straight, be safe, and have fun.